Hey, happy friends. Your old pal Bo here. The only man on YouTube with a face for radio and a voice for print. Coming at you again with another observation regarding the tabletop role-playing game setting. First, I really hate that uh, role-playing game, the term, has been co-opted by the video game industry. Uh, that's our term. We have RPGs. They have video games. So let's stop referring to our games as tabletop. And just start referring to our games as RPGs. I'll let the video gamers do what they will. Anyway, that, that quick aside out of the way, let's talk about RPGs for a minute. Seems to be a big uh, demarcation in the community regarding uh, game mechanics versus game setting. And I've seen a lot of people play or buy really terrible games just for the cool setting. And I know that some people uh, will make an argument that that setting or game trumps mechanic. And uh, I kind of want to take the opposite approach from that and, uh, and say that if I've got a cool game, if I've got a game that's easy to customize and easy to play, I can make my own setting. I can make my own place. What we really need are more players, uh, more gamers, more creators, more GMs, DMs, referees that are willing to take the time to make their own setting, to investigate uh, settings agnostic, uh, pardon me, rules agnostic setting books, and uh, adapt those to the mechanics and rules and game that they really like. Uh, but I have seen a, a lot of, over the years, really uh, terrible games, especially games based on particular IPs, where people want to go out and buy a game because there's no, let's take an example, there's no Firefly game. Well, let's go out and buy a Firefly game, where instead they could take a game that has really good mechanics like GURPS or Traveler and make a Firefly game. Uh, that's, that's just a really, that's just one example of the possibilities. And it, it just kind of, um, it seems frustrating to me from, from where I'm sitting that, uh, that there, this argument even exists, that people will say that um, setting Trump's rules or setting Trump's game, whereas if, if I just have a good game, I'll just um, make the game that I want. And, and that's a, a problem with especially, I think, this generation of um, role-playing gamers. They want to sit down and just play the game when they don't realize that being the DM, GM, referee requires a, a lot more work than just, say, running a module. You have to put in uh, the work on the front end. And I posit that as a, a GM, the more time and effort you put on, on the front end, the more enjoyment you'll get as a result for both you and your players. So spend some time uh, crafting the world that you want to play first, and then find the rules that work with that game second. Uh, I think with that, you have to overcome a lot of the um, social um, initiative, no, momentum, the social momentum that comes with playing some games. You, know, you might have a hard time convincing people to play a game that's not uh, SRD, um, D20, D&D based, because that's what people know. But... If you, if you build the game based on the premise, IP, world that you want first, you will be able to find the rules, uh, system, mechanics that fit what you want second. So uh, follow the, the early advice of uh, Stephen Covey. Begin with the end in mind. Find the game that you want to play and then find the rules, mechanics, game system that you want to play. Advertise it and advertise it as the game first and as the rule second. Hey guys, I've got this really cool game. Um, kind of like, remember the movie Heat? 
yeah, we're all going to play bank robbers. We're going to go out and do this and do that and build this, this really smart gang and have these heists. Well, and then after you've got them hooked on that, then you can uh, uh, entice them with the mechanics, rules, and system. I think a lot of times you go the other way around. Hey, guys, you, you want to play D&D? And then, well, what kind of game? Well, it's D&D. Uh, do you, you want to play... I don't even know. You want to play Vampire of the Masquerade? No, we're all going to be vampires. So, what I think what I'm saying is be mindful of the, of the kind of game you want to play first and then worry about um, the game that you're going to play second. I think if you do that as a, as a GM, as a referee, then you're going to find a lot more um, enjoyment in your playing. It's going to be a lot more organic and a lot more um, enjoyable uh, as the referee, as the GM. So remember, guys, uh, it's, it's your hobby. Make it what you want. Play the settings that you like. Play things that are new and unusual and find ways to stretch and grow your imagination. Um, play play uh, the Spanish Inquisition. Play um, Martian colonizers. Play Bronze Age Aztec warriors. Think about ways to stretch and grow the hobby beyond the typical... Uh, hex crawl, dungeon crawl, make role-playing gaming less a video game experience and more of a, of a social uh, world-building experiment. Right. So until then, I've ranted long enough, Cheryl Pabo, and telling you to, um, to play that game, to play that game you want to play, and uh, make it your own. Peace.